that's my wheelhouse, you know. Um, just with the um, the projects that you lost, had had you considered writing under a nom de plume? Was there a way to like say, like, well, yeah, like, you know what? It's it's interesting. Greg Lukianoff said um, in his book, "The Counseling of the American Mind," that more, um, since two thousand and two, more professors in the United States have cancelled have been cancelled than during the entire period of McCarthyism in the nineteen fifties. Absolutely shocking. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I do think it's a historical moment, like like McCarthyism. Um, but but I like Donald Trumbo. You know the fa who famously wrote Spartacus and and uh, was uh, was able to kind of create a kind of factory for cancelled uh, uh, writers at that time. I don't know. It's not so much. It's that was Hollywood. Different, different ethos, different structure, um, and and you know, it was kind of a. It wasn't like an emergency. You know, like the, the, I see what's happening to these young kids as an emergency. Uh, so can't like, I can't put tools down. I can, I can certainly put it on the back burner and, 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 and do what you might call passive activism, but I can't like down. Yeah, you've got to make a living Graham, you know, as well. Sure. Sure. Uh, but it's hard, you know, I lost my agent recently. Uh, even if someone did want to hire me, it would be hard for them to, to, uh, find a way of doing so. Uh, so you know it's 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 tough, and also I know that the essential thing is basically I would have to form a relationship, and I'm not saying this is impossible; it just hasn't happened yet. But I would have to form a relationship with one specific person who did not tell anyone else that I was working on the show, because because in a group of let's say six people, there's going to be one person who thinks I'm a bigot at least, you know, so. It's just the tyranny of the minority, isn't it? Isn't that what isn't that what they call it? The tyranny where, where one person can influence the entire group. Um, yeah. So you are working on a project. There is a pathway career wise for you back from the cancellation, right? Just about. Yeah. But who knows? This one might fall through. I don't know. I mean, I think I think if this falls through, I think the two things I'm going to concentrate on this year is. Uh, I'm going to do, I, I, I've kind of been enjoying doing stand-up. So, uh, you know, with the book, I can kind of combine the book and my stand-up into a kind of a evening with Graham Linehan type of event that I think could do quite well. Uh, you know, so I'm going to concentrate on that in the short term, try and, try and get, uh, you know, knowledge about the book out there because, it's still the copies of it are still being hidden in bookshops and so on. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, after that, after that year, um, I'll see how I feel, you know, I'll see, I'll see if there's anything else I, I, that I really want to do, you know, I think, I think to be honest with you, I think the thing I'd most like to do is I'd like to write a play. I'd like to write a play that's a two hander or a three hander that can be done very cheaply. And I would like to just release it, you know, so that anyone who wants it can do it. Because uh, this is an issue that is equal, uh, just as important as as what um, you know, as 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 you say, you know, McCarthyism. It needs its own the crucible. You know, we need to be able to talk about and understand what happened in the last five, six, ten, fifteen years, and uh, make sense of it, and and try and. Um, try and write write things again you know or i g h t you know but we need to be able to have conversations and arguments collectively without becoming vindictive and attempting to destroy each other's lives I wish that all sides could sit down and collect and, and gather together and just go through the ideas in an in a grown-up constructive thoughtful way without trying to destroy each other. My, um, I, I don't like mobs. I don't like bullying and I don't like seeing people destroyed. Um, for well, let me get like one of the very first pieces of activism I did in this was that I signed a letter written by a gay activist named Johnny, Johnny Best, who it was a very sober, well-written letter asking Stonewall to have a conversation. And, and among other things, it asked Stonewall to try and help to reduce the toxicity around the conversation. Uh, 
Stonewall gave their answer within a day. They said no. Why? Why? Why would they say no? Do you think? Because their their philosophy uh, and their approach at the time was was under the banner of no debate. And any time you tried to talk about it, they used the line, you're debating people's lives or you're debating trans people's rights to exist. So the debate would be framed ahead of time as an evil thing to even contemplate having. OK, so we this letter was written, sent to Stonewall. Stonewall said no. I contacted a few people asking to sign it, among them uh, James Dreyfus, who uh, is Scottish he, actor. Features in the book. Yeah, Scottish actor who, you know, was part of a sitcom called Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. That was quite groundbreaking uh, at the time, uh, was in a very well-loved role in The Thin Blue Line. You know, he was a he was a, a bit like me. You know, he's exactly my age. He was in my first sitcom and um, and uh, he signed the letter alongside me and he has barely worked in six years, you know. For signing a letter asking for a more respectful debate. If you asked him, would he sign it again? What do you think he'd say? He's so sweet because I feel responsible, you know, for, for what happened to him. And uh, I once asked him uh, and I said something like, I, I, I helped Groot destroy your career. And <clears throat> he's like me. It's like, no, once you once you once you're doing it, once you realize what's going on, nothing's more important. Nothing's more important than saving the next generation of kids who who might be sucked into this. Nothing's more important than, you know, stopping women from losing their livelihoods because they try to talk about this. For me, it's it's it's, you know, I I, I don't I don't regret it in that sense. It's like no, what else could I have done? You know, and and I think James feels the same way. One of the things that I. Uh, I... The, the the American Psychiatric Association have said that um, one of the, the a sudden and catastrophic event can lead to people taking the ultimate decision to end things prematurely. Will Store, the writer of Status Game, has said that a, a sudden and catastrophic loss of status is one of those catastrophic events. And what I worry what I worry about when when looking at the debates on both sides is is the mental health effects that it, it's having on everybody who's engaged in it. Right, you had a sudden and catastrophic loss of status and a material loss in terms of your, and you've spoken about being on anxiety medication, right? Like, what? I ju why does it have to be such a mental health catastrophe for everybody on both on all sides that's getting involved in it? You know, I would argue it's not a mental health catastrophe for the for those on the other side. The other side are having perfectly normal careers and completely untroubled by by the whole thing. But on our side, yeah, it's uh, you know it it affects your your work, it affects your social relationships. Uh, you know, it's. Um, yeah, it's very distressing, and uh, and 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 you can genuinely see. I, I think Gillian Phillip, who was a author who lost her career and is now driving a truck, she said that the aim is to make you kill yourself. That's that's the, it's almost like an online game where the aim is to make you, make you kill yourself, uh, and you know it's like the best way you can say f you to them is by not doing it, you know? So whenever I'm in, whenever I have my darkest moments, I just, I just take great pleasure in, in knowing that, you know, uh, I'll be, I'll be visible fighting, you know, um, I won't ever back down. I know I'm right. Uh, that keeps me going, you know? What has, uh, in terms of the support or the reaction from your, the country of your birth been like? Uh, well, non-existent really. I think that like, obviously there, there's a, there's, there's a, 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 a big Irish resistance to this stuff. And I'm friendly with lots of people in that world. Um, but in general, you know, I don't really, I don't really blame them in a way because like, I do think that in the, in the best of times when you're still even beloved by everybody, the 
writers of sitcoms are not really, they're completely invisible, you know, which is fine most of the time. It was fine up till now, you know. Um, but I did think that considering the position Ted had in Irish society, you know, I've probably been more responsible for a kind of sense of humour uh, in terms of memes and so on than, than, than many other people. I thought that the lingering affection would mean that people would pay a little bit more attention to what was happening to me and might stand up for me a little bit more. Um, but no, it was just, again, it's almost like even people I'd, I'd worked with, like I worked, for instance, with Carl McGorman uh, of Amnesty uh, Ireland. He's no longer CEO, thank God, even though there's someone just as bad replacing him. But I worked with him on Repeal the Eighth, you know, and the video that my wife and I did, I think, had a big effect on Repeal the Eighth, you know. Again, something I thought there might be a little bit of warmth and appreciation for. But no, it was, you know, it, it, it's it's... It's been again the the loss of status is complete. Is it? It. it, it I lost it in Ireland. Lost it in the, in the UK. I don't think there's. Um, you know, I I I I I I I I don't I don't even think people know about it for the most. Part, you know, and every time I do something like, for instance, I'll give you an example. I I spoke to an Irish Times uh, reporter, and he spoke to me for a full hour in which I explained all my positions and why I felt the way I did. And several times during the conversation, he tried to talk about Enoch Burke. And I actually don't know the full story of Enoch Burke. I hadn't been paying that much attention to it, um, possibly because I knew he had a uh, very religious background and and I didn't know whether, uh, I didn't know how much that had to do with what was going on and so on. But anyway, I hadn't really followed it. Um, and uh, and finally, he managed to get me to say something about it. And the headline of the Irish Times was something like, Graham Linehan says he and Enoch Burke are unlikely bedfellows. You know? So... And did you? Did I, did I say that? I can't remember how I, put, how I put it. I said something... Yeah, eventually I did say something like, yeah, we're probably... We're probably... Um, uh, 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 agreed on things like um, pronoun use, even though he's religious and I'm not, you know? But the, my point is that three times he asked me about it and it was all to get that headline. The whole thing was to get that headline so they could further discredit me by uh, associating me with um, someone who's considered a religious zealot over there, you know? So you can't quite... The, the you can't quite break through the meniscus of, of 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 what activists in the media have done they've they they make it very very hard to get your voice out there to explain what's going on i knew all the reviews in the irish times and so on in fact i know someone uh offered to review it and was told uh no we know how you feel you know because they thought it would be a positive review so it's like it's like you, you you just can't break out of what of the box that they've created for you, you know. That 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 like that is quite a serious um, assertion. If we think about, I mean, the Irish Times would be should be considered a bastion of objectivity. Yeah, but it's, um, it's and just the literary bad. supplement, like they've they've got to be looking at these the books that are review, reviewing them dispassionately and and. Um, so what you're saying is that essentially that the, a person who offered to review it, um, it was predetermined that it would be a positive review and, and the Irish Times would only review it if, if the review would be negative? Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that, that's yeah, I, um, yeah, that's very concerning. Um, but you know, like we know, we, you just know what kind of review you're getting according to how captured the paper is. The Irish mm. Times is completely captured by gender ideology. Guardian gave it a bad review, completely captured by gender ideology. Independent, completely captured. Uh, the argument breaks down with uh, uh, the Times because Janet Turner gave me a bad review, but that's for that was for personal reasons because she just doesn't like me. Um, and uh, and yeah, we you know the when when it goes outside these very uh, captured uh, papers, we get we get the review. 
you know we deserve which is it's it's a pretty good book you know but i, I it, it's a fantastic book and i but i think there's a huge opportunity here graham if the audience if 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 judici- um, thoughtful literary readers objective readers there's a huge opportunity to create newspapers and create media that are that are honorable and will stay objective and will consider both sides and are not audience captured you know yeah for, for creators to come along and 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 plant their flag on the ground and say we're going to talk to all sides in the argument and we're, we're going to maintain objectivity no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. But at the moment, for instance, in the UK, the only the only channel doing that is GB News. Like GB News has persistently interviewed Maya Forstadter, Helen Joyce, me, other people in the gender critical fight. And GB News is considered just a, a, a fascist channel by by uh, uh, a lot of people. Um, and yet the BBC it it has it it basically refuses to speak to these people so even when when you do get a, an organization that's trying to break out of the bubble you know they'll they'll find they'll use and what they do now to people like me and maya is they call us right wing because we appear on gb news you know so so there's a whole framework set up that makes it very very difficult to be heard by a mainstream uh audience um but you know the way I, the way we're thinking of it now is that it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, like it, the awareness of the book is very low. But 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 as time goes on, you know, it'll be harder and harder to ignore. Well, when the book is a tale of two halves, if you like. The first half of it is about your journey, how you broke into comedy writing, and I think it's very important to remind everybody who's listening to this conversation, who may be coming out of a film school, who may be looking to break into writing in Ireland, in the UK, in New York, in Dublin, that you chart that journey. And it's full of hints and tips about how to work with actors, the process of writing, how to engage with producers, how to find an agent, this litany of stuff. I came out of, uh, in 2014, out of the National Film School. I did a a master's in in, uh, screenwriting. I could have used this book as a template and a guide on how to break into comedy writing in the UK, which can be transposed to the United States and to Ireland. So anybody that's watching this and is in film school, get the book for that reason and for, for many others, but, but, but that is a, a very important reason. Yeah. This, is the, the, this conversation is the reverse of the book in the sense that like the book is 75% about my career and about comedy and 25% about this issue uh so yeah it's uh i'm glad you i'm glad you think it's useful that's really that's really good to know you know but you know as they say the very first thing i was kind of like i had a plan my plan was i'm getting older my sense of humor is going to get a little bit creakier as i get older um so what i could do is uh is um uh teach you know start to start to try and teach a younger generation that's what i was thinking as well Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed that short clip, the full extended version should be right about down here. And the subscribe button should be over here. So don't forget to go ahead and click. Thank you.